Hello, welcome to this overview of orbitozygomatic approach. There are several ways of undertaking this. It could be one piece or two piece and there can be further variations. In one piece, the cranial flap and the orbitozygomatic complex are removed all in one piece. This is very difficult to do. In two piece orbitozygomatic approach, the cranial flap is removed first and then the orbitozygomatic complex is removed as one unit. This two piece orbitozygomatic approach is easier to do and is usually the standard approach. This overview is on two piece orbitozygomatic approach. When I say two piece, that means the cranial flap as one and the orbitozygomatic complex as one. So that becomes the two-piece approach. Further and more detailed treatment of this approach can be found on the book by Dr. Michael Lawton, Seven Aneurysms, Tenants and Techniques for Clipping. First of all, I will outline where I would be putting the burr holes. The main important burr hole is this key, key burr hole where when you put the burr hole that it opens into the frontal fossa as well as the lower half into the orbit. So this access from this uh, burr hole you have to the frontal fossa and to the orbit that will be useful for you to execute the orbitozygomatic approach, the keyhole. The other burr hole I'll put on the inferior temporal bone, one on the posterior temporal or parietal bone, and one in the frontal bone, lateral to the supraoptic notch. Then I would connect up these burr holes to raise a cranial flap. So we have connected the burr holes with the cranial tomb and I will raise this bone flap and put it to the side. But for the rest of the tutorial I will keep it there so that it's easier for you to orient it. The next step for us is to remove the orbitozygomatic complex as one unit. Dr. Lawton describes six osteotome cuts to achieve this. The osteotome cuts are usually undertaken with oscillating saws which uh, allow precise cuts as well as uh, prevent undue loss of bone. The first cut is at the zygomatic arch. The cut could be achieved in different ways. One of them is to achieve it in two perpendicular cuts. This creates a notch and this allows more secure fixing of the zygomatic arch back together with plates at the end of the operation. The next cut would be on the body of the zygoma going from inferior lateral proceeding to superior medial. The third cut would be from the inferior orbital fissure to connect to the medial terminus of the second cut. So to review the first cut is on the zygomatic arch, second cut is initially from the inferior uh, lateral aspect of the zygoma, body of the zygoma, taking up superior medially and the third cut would be from the inferior orbital fissure to connect up to the second cut. Usually the second and third cut again forms a notch. Once again, this is so that 
at the end of the operation the bones could be put together in a more secure way and plated together the fourth cut would be extending from this burr hole and extending backwards in the sagittal plane for to do that you remember that this cranial flap has been removed so you would have to then through this cranial access that you are going to gently retract the frontal dura of the frontal lobe to make this cut so this cut the fourth cut will be extending backwards along this sagittal plane to 2 to 3 centimeters this fourth cut is now shown by this blue line so extending from the frontal burr hole extending backwards in the sagittal plane and going up to 2 to 3 centimeters on the roof of the orbit you will recall that the macarty's keyhole would have made a hole to the frontal fossa as well as to the the lower half to the orbit that's what this marking represents the uh, opening from the macarty's keyhole into the orbit so our fifth cut is going to be from the end of our fourth cut going horizontally to meet this hole that we made with the macarty's keyhole burr hole that we made at the beginning of our procedure so this line that that now have drawn represents the fifth cut the sixth and the last cut would extend from the inferior orbital fissure externally to the keyhole that we made earlier so if i were to draw that so from the inferior orbital fissure will extend to the keyhole burr hole this will be essentially a cut on the lateral wall of the orbit if we look inside the orbit that will represent that cut will represent a cut going from here to our burr hole so let's review so we were going to accomplish a two piece obitozygomatic approach the first piece was the cranial flap that we raised the important burr hole is the keyhole burr hole that opens into the frontal uh fossa as well as into the orbit and we usually remove this and then we make six cuts to take the orbito zygomatic complex as one piece for that we did the six cuts one was on the zygomatic arch the second was into the body of the zygoma and that was connected by the third cut that extended from the inferior orbital fissure to the second cut the third cut extended from the frontal burr hole extending posteriorly 2 to 3 cm over the roof of the orbit and the, the fifth cut was more of a horizontal cut from the end of that or end of the fourth cut to the opening that we made 
into the orbit with our Makati's keyhole. The final cut was from the inferior orbital fissure to our Makati's keyhole. That was essentially a cut in the lateral wall of the orbit. This should allow us to take this orbitozygomatic complex in one piece. The result is a axis that is akin to this. The cranial flap with the removal of the superior and the lateral orbital wall. I hope this overview clarified the principles of the bony cuts for orbitozygomatic approach. With this basis, then you can start to understand its variations. Thank you for your kind attention. Wishing you a good day and bye for now.